What's up guys? This is the breakdown video of my Facebook iceberg. As always, link to the image will be linked down below. I'm sure you understand the concept of the iceberg. Stuff at the top is more commonplace information. Stuff at the bottom is more obscure. So with all the formalities out of the way, let's hop into it. Undesired contact and communication. The all too common friend request from that family member or an old friend that you have no desire to speak to. Anybody on Facebook long enough will have to deal with it. Ah, uh, no thanks. Messenger. This goes hand in hand as the direct form of communication for that previously mentioned undesired communication, though some communication can be beneficial through the messenger. Standard pages and groups. This is your residential commercial page or group. Support your local business or the big ones, whatever you prefer. Drama. This is something you can't go long on Facebook without coming across. It's just an unfortunate byproduct of the current human condition. 71%. This is in reference to 71% of Americans using Facebook. Number three. This alludes to Facebook being the number three most used website behind only Google and Facebook. Poke. This is the now infamous method of contacting someone when you want to gently remind them that you still exist. Tier 2. Trending pages and groups. These are the groups that you join in when you want to seem cool or you want to hop in on a trend while it's hot. This could be a popular game, perhaps a popular trending challenge like the Ice Bucket Challenge. I'm sure you can think of a few. Common interest groups. These are the groups that people will join when they have a genuine passion for it. These could be a sport or a fan page. There's plenty of examples. 41% of California. This refers to the figure that 41% of California is on Facebook, which when you consider the size of the state, it's massive. It's by far the most active state in America, standing at over 15 million users. Propaganda machine. It's not really a secret that the power of Facebook allows certain views and perspectives to be forged upon the masses. This can be a powerful tool and can do great things, and it can do terrible things. Original purpose. This refers to Facebook's original intent of being an overly large student directory where you can find out your friends' schedules and link up communications with them. It was never meant to be the giant open social network that it is today. Senior groups. This refers to the abundance of seniors using the platform that band together to make senile groups of elders that laugh at boomer comedy, discuss unimportant matters, and reflect upon the corrupt and lazy youth. Creepypasta slash SCP. This is in reference to these specific communities that are self-perpetuating as the content is not reliant on companies but instead all from the community itself. Facebook Gray. This alludes to the color of Zuck's infamous t-shirt. He only has one color, dubbed Facebook Gray. Tier 3. Other Billionaires. This alludes to the four other co-founders of Facebook. Each of them made out like bandits becoming billionaires in the process, though they don't have to take the brunt of the abuse like Zuck. Conspiracy slash belief groups. I'm just going to put all of these groups here together so as not to bias toward one or another. This goes from flat earthers to organized religions to political beliefs. They vary in sizes and the level in which they can be vocal. Facebook gives these people a great platform for which to speak upon. Popular ads. Alright, so we haven't seen the iconic Super Bowl commercials on Facebook yet, but mark my words, we will. Though we have plenty of companies that have an annoyingly wide area of influence and can become targets of ridicule and parody, so we're getting there. Harvard graduate. This is in reference to Zuck having himself marked as a Harvard graduate, despite having dropped out of Harvard and literally creating an empire. I think it's actually kind of a baller move and just him sticking it to everyone saying look how much it mattered. Pirate mode. 
This is the language selection within Facebook that changes the website to a pirate theme. You'll see options like home port, bottle o messages, and abandoned ship. Steve Chen. This is a former employee of Facebook for just a few months, but he eventually left the company thinking he was going to find greener pastures, and luckily he did because he went on to create a little business called YouTube. Online persona. This is in reference to the online personas that people tend to create when they are on Facebook and other social medias. This is what you want people to think your life is like. Perhaps you want to be a social justice warrior or a fake photoshopped model. Maybe just some rich dude that has no worries at all. Just pick what you want to be and select it on the drop down menu. Drop shipping stores. So with the rise of Facebook and the ease of internet business creation, we're seeing an epidemic of borderline scam stores. People are polishing turds from China and selling them at higher prices with Facebook ads. Then the customer has to wait four to eight weeks for the product to arrive from the other side of the world. Then if they receive the product, they open the ridiculously cheap packaging and find the turd. And of course they're disappointed. Face Mash. This was Zuck's first project before the Facebook. It was meant to be a way to compare people's faces and vote who was more attractive. The board he presented it to shot it down, but it did pave the way for FB to take its place. Data Breaches This is the obvious risk you take when you're willingly giving all of your information to a company online like this. If there is a data breach, everything you are and have is no longer private. Though it's not like much of that information is truly private to begin with, Big Brother is watching you. Tier 4 Al Pacino This is in reference to the first face on Facebook. An early version of the site's header image displayed a man that was later revealed to be the face of Al Pacino. Bots much like many of our favorite platforms online, bots can be found automating various tasks like advertising, marketing, or communicating. It's not all bad, but it can definitely be a major annoyance to downright hindrance. Morbid reality. This refers to groups that acknowledge the morbid aspects of life. These could be videos of graphic deaths or articles that you won't find in major media outlets. Many of the posts are labeled NSFL or not safe for life, though the group's intent is not to fetishize the content, more of just a way to examine it from an educational and curious perspective. Nevertheless, much of its content is very indigestible to many people. Facebook was stolen. This is in reference to the allegations that the idea behind Facebook was stolen from two brothers. They had a similar project called Connect You, and they claimed Zuck stole the concept from them. Old Zuckerberg Posts Some of Zuck's old Facebook posts from 2007 and 2008 were apparently mistakenly deleted, but they weren't able to restore them, isn't it just code? They claim the posts can still be found on Facebook's blog, but they even admitted they don't even know how many posts were deleted. Strange. Questionable Marketplace Items So Facebook Marketplace is still fairly new, but there's already been a number of super sketchy items sold through it. Strange things can be found like haunted dolls with video evidence, voodoo dolls, used condoms filled with confetti, and a burial plot with an included casket. Weird Fetish while the concept of a fetish in itself is not too uncommon, some niche fetishes can be pretty weird. I mean, I, we all got our own quirks, and I'm no judge, but some of them are pretty far out there. Tier 5 Against TOS Groups Here's where we start getting into the sick and twisted territory. This entry can vary as the terms of service can really be subjective, but certain things should always be off limits altogether. I won't go too into detail, but I'm sure there are things already coming to your mind. Luckily, these things will eventually get shut down. Peer to peer. Early versions of Facebook came equipped with a file sharing system that was standard within the website. It was believed it would be a core function of the platform, but due to potential legality issues, it was forced to be terminated. Hate groups. 
These are groups that are meant to specifically incite violence or hatred towards another group. Oftentimes they will glorify and praise these actions being done. It's just a hive for a bunch of people that are weak-minded and want to feel special. Easter eggs. Making things a little bit lighter here, Facebook has a number of Easter eggs in the website like flipping the screen upside down and even the Konami code. Stolen content. Every day, countless creators' content is stolen and reposted on Facebook without any contribution to the original creator. As a longtime content creator, I completely feel the pain here and to not be at least given credit for your hard work is sad. But like they say, hate the game, not the player. Anything goes groups. This refers to large communities with unmoderated communication. Basically it's like 4chan but with extra steps. There are large cesspools of children and grown children that try to provoke and shock others with the occasional illegal content thrown in. Tier 6 ARG Facebook has ample room for an ARG or alternate reality game, which is just basically an interactive form of storytelling that will often require additional steps to understand the story. Oftentimes it can be portrayed as someone that just appears to be a genuine person living a normal life, then something insane happens to them and they share it on social media. It can go viral from there and after people discover it, they begin to question its legitimacy. Feel free to check out my video on the ARG iceberg linked above and below. Shadow bans. It will appear as if you're posting, but your interaction is completely limited. This effectively suppresses your ability to communicate without even letting you know it. Data monetization. It's no secret that Facebook gathers your data and uses it to sell ads more effectively. If someone is selling a product, then obviously they're going to be advertising to the demographics that are most likely to purchase that product. Your value to them is based on how much people are willing to spend to get in front of you. Live stream self-harm. This is just a sad part of the modern age and technology. With ease of access to internet and streaming capabilities, it was only a matter of time until we'd come across this, especially with the epidemic of poor mental health, which was arguably worsened due to social medias like Facebook. Political agenda. So I don't follow politics, nor do I have any care to, but I just know that the power and reach that Facebook has, if there were an agenda, it would be very feasible for Facebook to enact it. This can be done by pushing an ideology or belief themselves or preventing it for others. Secret hidden groups. These are private groups with the sole purpose of deprave acts of humankind. And because it's done behind closed doors, there's no moderation. Again, this is just another unfortunate part of our society in this day and age. If they didn't communicate via these groups, it would be somewhere else. Tier 7. The algorithm. This is the reason that people are on Facebook as often as they are. This is the brain that customizes your experience to be tailor-made to your interests, suggesting new content or products that you are most likely to enjoy or prefer. Its sole purpose is to keep you on its platform as long as it can. Responsibilities in real life be damned. Watch that next video or listen to that new podcast that just came out. But exactly why would a company want you on its platform regardless of your well-being? You are the product. When something online is free, you are not the customer, you're the product. Most Facebook users are blissfully ignorant of this concept or they're able to willingly look past it because they simply don't care. And at the end of the day, your presence on that platform equates to more advertising revenue for Facebook. The scary thing is that this applies to so many things around us, even the platform you're on right now. So with that said, I encourage you to first, like and subscribe. Then second, take inventory of your entertainment and social media consumption and truly determine whether your time is being invested wisely. It's the only resource we can't get back. But really, what do I know? I'm just some random guy online. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, cheers.